Hi everyone, today we're, go we're going to be discussing alternative sampling methods discussed in the AP Statistics curriculum. Now it's very important that before you watch this video you understand what a simple random sample is, or an SRS. If you don't, go look it up on the internet, or you can look in the statistics playlist of the Filamenters channel, and you can look up the video labeled the SRS to learn more about what a simple random sample is. Now that that's out of the way, we can begin our discussion. The first method I want to talk about is the stratified random sample. And essentially what you're going to what's going to happen here is instead of just doing an SRS of all the individuals, you're going to take the individuals, put them in groups or strata. Let's see, I get a pen out here. You're going to put them in groups, also known as strata, that are and all the individuals in that strata are going to have one characteristic or trait in common. And here are some advantages and disadvantages. I would just, you know, maybe for a test that so you have in class, memorize these. But for the AP exam, you probably wouldn't have to know these. All right, moving on. So let's take an example, right? Let's say, oh, I don't know, I'm at Hogwarts, right? And I want to do a sample of students who purchased their wands at Ollivander's, right? But instead of asking every single student and putting every single student in my sample, or performing an SRS on the entire population of students, I can group them by their houses, right? You have Gryffindor, you can have Slytherin, and you can have Ravenclaw, and I just don't like Hufflepuff, which is why they're not in this PowerPoint. Anyways, once you have divided your your all the students into the strata by house, you know, you have an individual group here, group here, strata, these are all strata, these circles, I'm just trying to make it clear that these are strata or groups that all share the same house, once you get your strata set up, you have to perform a simple random sample on each strata. So you'd have to perform an SRS on Gryffindor, one on Slytherin, and one on Ravenclaw. The next method or s of sampling I want to talk about is the systematic random sample. <coughs> and this essentially is going to be that you're going to ask every nth person or every person of a certain position in your sample for information. So let me, I think I think an example will be best to explain what that means. Again, advantages and disadvantages. Memorize them for a class test, not for the AP exam. So let's say let's say there are a, a thousand first graders in line, right? And you don't have time to ask each one of the first graders where they uh, where they got their shirts from, right? So instead, you say, okay, well, I need a certain sample size. So let's say there are a thousand kids in line. And I say you want a certain sample size because, generally speaking, on the AP exam, whenever you need to do a systematic sample, you're going to have to get a certain number of respondents in your sample, right? So let's say there are a thousand kids in line, and I need 200 responses, right? Well, that means I'm going to have to ask every fifth person, right? Every fifth per I'm going to ask every fifth person in line, every fifth kid in line, where they got their clothes from. And I got that by dividing the total number of people in the line or in the group by the number of responses I needed. Now what's important to know is that you can't start at the front just because you want to. You have to use a random number generator or randomly pull a number out of a hat to determine what position you're going to start at. You're going to start at that position and then ask every fifth person in line or every nth person in line. But so remember, find the nth person or the person you want to ask by dividing the number of people by the number of responses you needed start at a random point by using start at a random point and then start using the pattern so i'm going to start at a random point in line let's say this kid right here and then from him i'm going to ask every fifth person following him now cluster sample this one is fairly straightforward uh, did i repeat a slide i guess i did but don't worry about it right all you need to know about a cluster sample, and get more information, is that you take whatever's in your chunk, right? So let's say I wanted to know information about home prices in Vegas, right? Well, instead, I would essentially put all the zip codes in a hat, draw a single zip code out, and then whatever zip code I got, I would have to ask all of the homes in that zip code, not just some, every single one. So if I got 89161, I would ask all the homes in 89161. And that cluster, asking by that specific group or area and all the individuals in it, in, in it would be a cluster sample.